Daniel Stahl. Yes, it is. Good morning. <laughs> hey, Daniel. Good morning. My name is Larry Reed, and I'm the hiring manager here. So um, could you please uh, remind me what position that you're uh, applying for? I am applying for the intermittent uh, clerk. Okay, great. And how did you find out about the position? Uh, well, when I read the job description, I love that it fit me so well. Uh, and eventually my, my uh, aunt, uh, Stephanie, who works for the Department of Labor and the uh, Union City office, actually informed me of applying for this position because she thought it was a good fit for me as well. Hmm, okay, okay, great. Uh, and did you have any other friends or family that are employed by the Department of Labor? Uh, my mother also works as a clinical examiner for the Passaic office, so she also in encouraged me to apply as well. Okay, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, anything in particular about the position that you thought you're well suited? Uh, I love customer service. I've been around a lot of positions that work with customer service. I love the satisfaction of uh, providing uh, excellent, uh, what is it I'm trying to say? Uh, <laughs> uh excellent service to them okay great um so you Sorry. you've had uh, you've had customer service positions with other uh, employers is that correct yes 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 okay yeah tell, tell me about your most recent position uh where you were in customer service my most recent position i was working in a shipping department for uh uh what's the name again <laughs> uh jn I don't. I can't remember the old job. Okay. Yeah. Make sure you have your resume. Uh, J and K uh, ingredients. J and K. J and K ingredients. Yes. Yeah, so I worked with J and K ingredients at a warehouse shipping uh, department. I was dealing with customers, uh, truck drivers who were uh, picking up uh, imports uh, or exports. I'm sorry, from the warehouse to be able to take to other customers. And so we would deal with them and help them load the truck and also navigate, navigate them if they need directions to where they have to go and then help them sign paperwork to make sure that we're getting the right, uh, uh, the right, uh, the right product to the customer. Okay. Well, that sounds like you had a lot of interaction with coworkers, but not really customers, right? What, what... Uh, these are, these are different companies that are coming into this warehouse. Uh, this warehouse uh, is a, is a bakery uh, industry is a baking uh, in industry. So they make uh, mixtures uh, to make dough, uh, bread, and stuff like that. And then we're the ones who provide those to the truckers who give those intel to retails. Okay, gotcha. So, uh, so you're currently employed by them or no? I right now I, I am currently unemployed, unfortunately, but I am uh, doing a, a side job as a soccer coach. Okay. Um, I am also noticing that uh, there's a lot of delay. So I don't know if that's because we have multiple computers streaming. I, I think know. so. Okay. All right. Whenever well, there's a lot of like uh, internet, people are using a lot of internet, it gets, there's a little bit of okay. latency. Yeah. So let, let's make sure that during your interview, all the computers are turned off. I won't be home. Your mom won't be home. Renee should be in school. So just make sure, okay. Bern, Monica, make sure everyone's computers are turned off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so um, all right. So tell me. So it looked like you got you were you enjoyed working in the customer service um, over at the, your last employer, but uh, you're no mm -hmm. longer with them. So can you explain to me uh, the terms of separation? Why would you leave? Uh, I did have to leave due to a medical uh, issue. I was uh, very sick during the time of my employment, and unfortunately, uh, they did terminate me due to uh, attendance. And uh, I completely understand and agreed with their decision. Um, unfortunately, I did. I, I am looking for a company to be able to uh, grow in and as well as help continue to succeed in their goal. So you, you were injured on the job? Uh, I wasn't injured on the job, but I was injured during working. So unfortunately, I was uh, dealing with a lot of stress that it ended up having me hospitalized. And during that time of hospitalization, I had no more uh, uh, leave days and eventually since they couldn't really do anything about it, they ended up just terminating me. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you foresee any problem uh, taking a role with the Department of Labor? Will any of these similar health conditions be a challenge to you? 
I don't think so. Um, that job was very uh, demanding, and I am a very fast, hardworking uh, person. But I don't, I don't see me having a problem with, with doing the goals and the tasks that you guys uh, can give me. Okay. Um, so tell me, what was your relationship like with your manager? Did you ever have any uh, disagreements you had to work out? Uh, there was a couple of uh, arguments over the amount of employees who were there during the, the working hours. So unfortunately, there would only be around... <sighs> Hold on, Larry, because see, I don't want to talk about my former employer because mm-hmm. I know it, we didn't leave in good terms. So I don't want to, I, I like, uh, if honestly, I'm, I'm, when you asked me about my work, my former employee, I did not want, I don't even want J and K on my resume because it's so short of a job and it just looks, it looks bad for me. Like I, I don't want J and K mm-hmm. on my resume. I rather have talked about you whole, uh, and I think I should have stuck with that. Yeah. I actually, I actually was expecting you to talk about you whole when you talked about customer yeah. service because you really excelled there. Right. Well, I think I think I'm gonna pick you. Wait a minute. You 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 wait. You can you can hide where you work because us we run the social security and we can see who was your most recent employer regardless. Now, Uh they may ask you what was what happened to your last employer. You have to make you can't. You're never going to talk bad about your employer. And if you. You were never injured at work. You mm-hmm. were sick and That's you were saying. terminated. At, at, at their policy is their attendance policy. You went over points, but it was because of medical reasons. That's why Larry couldn't understand. Were you injured at work? No, I wasn't injured. Oh, I didn't say it was injured. I said I was hospitalized. Issues. Right. It was medical issues only. But okay. JK... It was more of shipping experience, but prior to that, it's you yeah, that's for why customer I, I didn't service. Bring it up. That's when you want to I didn't want to bring it up, but he said it was former yeah. employee. And since like yeah, I know yes. they're going to watch where I worked last, I yes, don't want to yes. go yeah, hide yes. them. Yes, yeah, you so, have to speak about so, it anyway. So what I, what I would have done, um, Danny, I, I, I actually thought I was leading you to reference your work at U-Haul because yeah. that's where you really shined. And... Mm-hmm. And and if they ask you if if they bring up the fact, well, was that your most recent employment? You mm-hmm. can tell them that that was your, the most uh, relevant. That was the most recent relevant oh, okay. work that you've done. Yeah. Relevant work, and then you know, right. and then they can say, you know, that that's what very important, right? And then you can say, well, you know, why did you leave the job? And then you could tell them, you know, you had just had a baby, you uh, you had obligations at home, and uh, you know. You, you know, you uh, they let they let they let they let you go because uh, yeah. um, you know because of your uh, your obligation to be home. You know, you know, you know. Tell them it's very very difficult. It was your first child. Um, yeah. You know, uh, you know. You're also you know take, taking care of your mother in law. Mm-hmm. You can even mention it was a very bad time that um, your father in law left. It, you know, whatever. Make make sure that they know it was a very very difficult time for you. And that, yeah. well, why, what, you know, why, well, why'd you work at J and K? And then you could say, listen, to be honest with you, I just needed, you know, I needed a job. I needed, yeah, a, you know, I needed, I needed employment. So mm-hmm. focus on your experience at U-Haul because you don't have to exaggerate. You, you, you were a rock star there. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, yeah, they, they, they promoted you. You were taking care yeah. of bilingual customers. Then they, uh, then they put, uh, they, uh, they, they had you responsible for sales and re- mm-hmm. recruiting partners. You know they they you yeah. know you 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 were you were rock star there, but bad timing. You you had you had a child, your first child, and yeah. there was a lot of pressure at home and taking care of you know the, the baby, your wife, the mother in law, and uh, and uh, you all just were you know they were not very sympathetic, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. really concentrate on you all, steer the conversation back to you all. And if they want to know why you didn't, you know, bring up J and K, just tell them. Well, you know, I'm I'm sorry, I didn't think it was relevant. I didn't think it was relevant to this position. Yeah, true. You know, but you really Mm -hmm. have to make them feel that you want to get back into customer service. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you can even you can even tell them, you know, being with your mom all the years, she really, really um, enjoyed helping people, especially yeah. those who are unemployed, um, you know, who need their benefits. Yeah. You know, so you're compassionate. You want to help. You want to get back into that game. And, you know, so really focus on customer service. 
focus on how how well you did at the company. You got promoted. They even had you in, moved the, moved you up into sales. And then mm-hmm. only because of the timing of you having your first child, it just you you weren't able to get to work, and that they let you go accordingly. Yeah. Okay. And get get yeah. excited about it. brag about it. You know, put that on paper. Yeah, yeah. Out, very clear in your mind. Yeah, I wrote that, it down. Yeah, that you would have done great at U-Haul if you if you continued working there. But then you yeah. saw that they just had they were just very unsympathetic to your situation. Mm-hmm. Right. OK, so. Um, all right. So, you know, part of customer service, uh, of course, you're going to run into customers who uh, who are not in agreement or not very cooperative. Have, had you yeah. ever experienced difficult customers? And, had, you know, can you tell me a, a real life experience you recall that you resolved? Yeah. So when I was working at U-Haul, I was actually in their calling uh, center. And so I would get phone calls from customers uh, complaining or arguing about they did not receive the truck that they were using to move their family and they're looking for another truck. And unfortunately, this happened during Labor Day weekend in 2018. So there was a lot of move uh, moving going around in New Jersey as well as in Florida. So all of the trucks that we would provide for the customers, unfortunately, they were on a one way traffic all the way to Florida. So being that the customer was using an in-town truck, meaning that she was going to take it from New Jersey, go to Florida and bring it back to New Jersey. Uh, I was actually able to talk to a manager and see if actually if I, if I can actually give that truck as a one way so that that way she didn't have to make a trip right back to New Jersey. And with that being done, the customer was satisfied. She was very excited and happy that she actually was able to move her family from New Jersey to Florida with uh, no uh, hiccups. So how do you deal in general when a customer is just very angry? It doesn't seem like you, you know, there's, there's nothing you could possibly say that's going to improve the situation. Um, what, what do you do? Like, do they, do they raise so their voice? I, I always tend to stay calm. I always tend to listen to what their problem is and see how I can help them from there and then come to an agreement on something that we can both uh, be satisfied with. Okay, great. Um, have you ever had any experience working from home part time during the week or or hybrid, or have you always had uh, full time positions going to the office? Uh, I've had always full time positions going to the office. Recently, when I did work at U-Haul, I had just gotten promoted into sales. So when I got promoted to sales, they gave me a laptop to take home when I'm done with working around or going to my uh, other business partners. Then I would go home, go on my laptop, searching any information of whether my trucks that came back that day or now, or if any customers are late, or if anybody needs help returning to a truck. And so that's the only time I ever worked really at home. But I was already, it was already late in the afternoon. My hours were done. I'm just checking on my work, making sure everything's okay. Okay. Now, you, you said you're a, you're a first time dad. So um, is there anything yes. at work that would, is there anything at home that would distract you from working from home? Uh, I don't think so. At first, at the first, uh, that first, when the birth of my child was born, I was under a lot of stress. I did have to take care of her as well as my mother-in-law, as well as my father leaving me. So there was a lot of stress playing in there. But now that my baby is growing, she's going to daycare. My wife is more hands-on now and she's able to watch her. I think there is no, no uh, distractions to my, to my uh, job. So um, with regards to customer service, I know you explained to me a situation uh, where you helped out a customer. I'm sure there were many other times. What, what, do you th- what are some of your strengths that allow you to be successful in customer service? Uh, I'm a very uh, active listener. I love to hear any people's problems because I feel like my opinion or output that I can give them may help them. So that's one of my very important things that I like to do. I'm also very respectful and calm. I don't really let anything get into my head because if it gets to that point, uh, it doesn't make doesn't make the situation go away and it doesn't help the problem as well. So I tend to just, you know, listen to the customers. They, the saying is that they're always right. And unfortunately, it is true. Okay, um, and, and uh, you know, in, in New Jersey, we have, we have a lot of Spanish speaking people. Um, do you mm-hmm. have experience speaking with the Spanish speaking people? Yes, I actually am bilingual. Um, my mother is Peruvian, so I was grown up to speak Spanish. I do know how to speak it and listen to it. Unfortunately, I'm not that great at writing it, but I am bilingual. Okay. 
Yeah. Again, again, Dan, you remember you want to really you know, be be aware in your mind what makes you a stronger mm -hmm. candidate than most, mm -hmm. right? So it's your temperament, it's your you know your cool thinking, it's your you know not getting emotional, not taking things personal, and of course mm -hmm. being bilingual is very very important because that separates you from a lot of other people, right? So yeah. let's make sure. Oh, okay, you're, well, you're, you're saying that that the last question you asked me, I should have brought up bilingual. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. you can say, you know, fortunately, because you're bilingual, you're in a position where you can help a lot more people than uh, than, yeah. than other people who can't speak Spanish. So yeah. that's right? true. Uh, the next time I, we talk, the next time when she asked me what was a complaint from a customer or how would you handle it, I will say I, I spoke with a customer in Spanish who was speaking Spanish and I helped her. Yeah, yeah. That, no, way, yeah. They, that way they get the idea of, OK, he might be bilingual and then I'll bring it up like I am bilingual. Yeah, because remember, th th this is a competition. They're going to pick somebody, yeah. and so you want to yeah. make sure that you stress, you know, your your advantages over most people. Being bilingual, of course, is very important. Having past customer service experience, very very important, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what what are some of the areas that you think you like to imp improve upon? Um, I want to improve upon my efficiency. Am I fast working? Uh, I feel like I can do better and do more uh, than what I am assigned or ruled. And I believe I can bring a new look or out, uh, perspective into the goals that we try to achieve. Okay. But again, so th these have to be you know, weaknesses. And th this is a very this is a very important question because one, um, it's, it's setting you up for a fall. Right. You mm -hmm. never want to give somebody a reason why not to hire you. So it's got to mm -hmm. be a weakness that's not that terribly a weakness and an area where you want to. I just saw a video of a guy who said I think he said like, oh, I don't really have a weakness. But one of my. Uh, what is it? I forgot what he said. But he said basically like it's not my weakness, but I do care a lot about the job and what I do and what I put myself, what I put into it. And so it made it seem like he wasn't. Yeah, he has weaknesses, but he puts those weaknesses into his job. <laughs> okay. So. Well, what, 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 well, one that I typically uh, use um, or uh -huh. I like to hear is, uh -huh. and, 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 and your mom is actually guilty of this herself. I like to tell the person that um, I have a tendency to take on more, more than I should. I'm very reluctant okay. to ask for help. And I know mm -hmm. if I ask for help more often from my manager or coworkers, I'd probably be more efficient. So I'm trying to learn how to delegate more and how to and how to accept help, right? Okay. Because uh -huh. that because that sounds really like you're just a great, hardworking, caring person. Yeah, 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 you want to yeah. do more, right? <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, you're not as efficient because you are taking it all on yourself, right? So mm. that that that's usually a very good weakness. I have a weakness yeah. of not accepting help. Uh, more often, and I know to get more work done, I really do need sometimes to rely on coworkers or or my manager. So that's something I'm trying to learn to do. <laughs> yeah. Right. And again, try try to get uh, emotional about it. I'm sure in your own work experience, you know, you were taking on more just because you don't like to say no. And whether it stressed you out at the, you know, at the warehouse or if it stressed you out at the desk at U-Haul because you're trying to handle everything yourself and, you know, and you, you're proud and you don't like to, you know, ask other people for help. So, you know, be, be genuine about it. Yeah. All right. I wrote that down, though. Yeah. That's a good. Uh, so I'm looking at some other questions that your mom shared with me. Um, Okay. Have you have you ever had a disagreement with your uh, immediate supervisor, and and how was that resolved? Um, I did have a disagreement with them, but it was just about uh, just uh, helping a customer with the way they needed their their. Uh, uh, let me explain. How can, I'm trying to figure out. How See, can I that's not the question. way you ask the question. You have to say, if you have a disagreement with your supervisor, how would you handle it? Because you're going more into his personal, and now he doesn't know how to react. But if you tell him in general, if you have a disagreement with your supervisor, how would you handle it? And now he can pretend, oh, I will handle it this and this and that. But if you tell him, I guess I've never had that experience. 
but but now he's gonna have to tell you his experience well, when he doesn't want to talk okay. about it. You could say, you know, honestly, I don't recall. I got along really, really well with my managers, but if I did ever have a disagreement, of course, they're more experienced than, than me. They're my boss, and of course, I'd want to hear out from their perspective. You know that that's yeah, you know. The letter anyway, responded. Yeah, then, then if you can't if you can't recall from past experience, just tell them you you know I can't I can't recall currently, but this is how I would you know. But don't don't mm -hmm. get caught up or panicked or anything if you can't uh, remember you know. Yeah. Right. I'm anyway, so, right, so, so I'll re I'll rephrase it with your mom. All right. Say we hire you at the Department of Labor and you have a disagreement with one of your managers. How typically do you uh, you know uh, address conflict with your manager? I typically try not to get in conflict with my managers. There is, I was in the army, so I know about a chain of, about a thing about called chain of command. So I know that he's a manager for a reason. He has more experience than me. He has, uh, uh, what's it called? He has more uh, life, yeah, right. life lessons that he learned. And um, when, if there is ever a situation, I would always listen to him and take his advice very, uh, uh, very considerate and just make sure that, uh, it would never happen again. So Dan, that's another reminder. One of your key strengths or advantages besides having customer service experience, right? Mm -hmm. Besides having family at the Department of Labor, right? besides mm -hmm. being bilingual, mm -hmm. is also you're in the military, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, just, I, was, I was just, trying to bring it in. Just, you know, and sometimes people may not even ask you any questions about your, your military experience. Just the fact that you're in the military in itself tells an employer that uh, you're committed, you're patriotic, yeah, you're, you're, you're dutiful, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so de definitely, you know, have, write down a few bullets of your, your strengths and, you, and mention mm -hmm. to them, you know, that you're, that you're bilingual so you can reach out to more people, help more people with your military background. Um, you know, you're very, very disciplined and you, and you respect and understand the chain of command, you know? Yeah. Very, 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 very basic things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so listen, a lot, of, uh, a lot of the work of the Department of Labor is computer uh, data entry. So do you have much mm -hmm. experience with computers? Yeah, so while I was working with U-Haul, um, I was dealing with customers, and let's say I had to find the information on what dates or times they were needing the truck to move, I would be able to log in, see their information, see when they scheduled their pickup, and then be able to change it either to a little different location if they called or had a situation, or just, you know, give them a truck from another place that, let's say, for some instance, they couldn't find it for at, at their reservation, well, they would call us, and eventually I would help them. Great. Um, so at work, um, how did you how did you know what to do throughout the day? Were you typically tasked by your boss to do certain things? Did you have much downtime, or you needed to be creative? How, how did you how do you typically go about your work day? How do you prioritize it? So uh, while I was working for U-Haul, uh, we did have our when we when I was working at the call center, we did have a, a, a goal of reaching a, a certain amount of customers to move within the end of the month. So it was like more of a quota. And so if we had gotten dispatched this this many trucks with these many miles, we should be making this goal. And so we would focus on that and then help uh, 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 what's it called? Help execute the goal. Okay, great. All right, so you you had goals based on customer calls, completing mm -hmm. calls. So again, that's something that's very very similar to what you'll be experiencing at the Department of Labor. Yeah. So again, mm -hmm. one of your strengths and advantages is you know the importance of um, you know resolving uh, customer issues as quickly as possible, and that mm -hmm. you're very mindful of production. You know how many yeah. calls you get through in the day that you already have experience with that. So again, that's one of your advantages. Mm -hmm. Customer service experience, the fact that you already have a uh, family. You could also mention, you know, hey, listen, I want to make I want to make my aunt and my mom proud. I'm going to do a great job because I know I'm a reflection of them. You know, so that's that's the advantage. The advantage is you're bilingual. The advantage is that uh, you have military experience, so that you're very dutiful and uh, commitment and um, and goal oriented, and mm -hmm. then and then also that you're aware of the importance of production 
and um, you know, and, and speaking to as many customers uh, as possible, especially knowing how many of them are in need of uh, benefits, right? right? So make it seem as if it's not just a matter of your boss making you, uh, mm -hmm. you know, do as many calls. Just you know, speaking to your mom all the years, how important it is to help people. You need to get through as many calls as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, so this way they know that you're self motivated. Mm -hmm. What happened? Repeat. How about the question? Tell me about yourself. Wouldn't that be a summary of what he has done? And he can talk about his customer service experience in the army. If you just ask, most of the time in every interview that I've been taking, they always have. How about hey, there's right no, now? You know, nice no customer just, service experience in the military. There's no customers in the military. <laughs> no, but. But your your military, you have to talk about talk following about rules, procedures. following rules and procedures. They want to know if you're a person mm -hmm. that can follow rules and policies. So mm -hmm. by me telling you, hey, tell me about yourself. How do you express yourself of what you have done, the experience you have done in customer service and follow, following rules and procedures? Right. So that's that's before you you start, Danny. Um, so that obviously is one of the first questions that they would throw at you. Obviously, they're not going to go through your resume and then three quarters through. Uh, this is just the idea that popped into your mom's mind. Yeah, so in the very, very beginning, it might be, you know, hi, Danny, uh, you know, what, what position are you interviewing for? You know, how'd you learn about the position? Great. Listen, before we get started about the position, tell me about yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. because, uh, yeah, you, you know, ask? hey, uh, you know, uh, I, I graduated, in, yeah. Okay, so I'm, I am a 28-year-old veteran, or 29, sorry. Uh, I am a 29-year-old veteran. Uh, I do have experience with the military. I um, experienced the whole boot camp training and school training, and it taught me to be very disciplined and to uh, reorganize my goals in my life. And so with that being said, I do love soccer. I am a dedicated soccer uh, fanatic, if you could say. I do love coaching soccer, or if not, playing it. Um, it is, uh, it teaches me a lot about teamwork and values within your uh, teammates and your team as well. And it teaches me as well as how to work in a team, right? And how you guys need, how, how a team needs to communicate to whether achieve the goal or to achieve anything that you guys are focusing on. Okay. Yep. And make, make sure that they know you're a dad, your first time dad. Okay. Yeah. Talk to Danny. What? Talk to him right now. Okay. All right. Your mom and in your in the introduction. Uh, and uh -huh. and again, I know I know we're just spitballing back and forth uh -huh. right now. So the idea here is just to um, listen to the recording, and so this way you have a better yeah. idea, right? Yeah, yeah. But I think I think with your mom's point is again, be mindful that uh, when you're asked about yourself, eventually you do want to tie it back to the position uh, that you're applying for. So mm -hmm. part of your introduction should be, you know, yeah, hey, my, my name is Daniel Stoll. I'm 29 years old, first time dad, um, uh, military background, customer service background. And I'm real excited about this position. Um, I, you know, a lot of, lot of my personal time also goes to serving customers in the community. I'm a, I'm a diehard soccer fan. I, I part-time coach for kids in the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always been very, very civic-minded, and I just love helping, and I get a lot of fulfillment. I got my yes. baby girl I brought into the world, and now uh, I know watching my mom through all these years, helping all the many unemployed in New Jersey in need of financial assistance, just being part of that team, I'm very, uh, very excited about this opportunity, and I think I'll do very mm. well. You know, yeah. kind of just everything that you're doing is is all related to helping, customer service, helping the community. Caring about children, just having a baby, um, and also tying in your background. You, you know, you're you know you're 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 you're, you're a college graduate. You're a military graduate. You know, uh, you know that that kind of thing. Yes, Daniel, you must say about the military. You're you're have an associate's degree, uh, and the re and you're on the third year or junior. The reason you couldn't continue because of pandemic and you had a baby, but 
You don't have to volunteer that. You're 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 mm -hmm. a college graduate. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. No, you're a college graduate. You're 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 a military graduate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, yeah. I mean, I I would yeah, listen a little bit to the back and forth. Start taking notes and just trying to be you know trying to be logical in the way you you talk about yourself and you mention things. But uh, yeah. again. Just be mindful of your key strengths. Write them down, the four, five, six things we just spoke about, and then yeah. and then make sure you weave them into all your answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Well, uh, well uh, unless your mom, you have any right. other ideas or questions, Raymond? Uh, how will you send this to me through email? Yeah. So um, I'm going to send you a link after, uh, after I save the recording and I log off. Uh-huh. Hold on, your mom's flipping through to see if there are any other questions that uh, she'd like to hear you answer. Why do you think this you'll is longer be than the interview? Ideal candidate. When there are four people interviewing you, you yeah. normally it's four or five questions each. So the interview will four take four to five your... questions each. That means I'm answering yes. twenty questions. About, and it's about thirty minutes interview. How many questions can you have? Just, just to tell me why is already everything you need to know about me. Yes. Why do you think <laughs> you will be an ideal candidate for this position? I, I am excellent in customer service. I am bilingual. I am a military experience, so I'm very disciplined. And I am a hardworking and a fast uh, working as well. And a good teammate. I am, I am, I am. You could tell me you are the king of the world, but that doesn't tell me how. I mean, what makes you good? Over well, all the questions that you asked me before. How would you know? Because you don't assume. How would you answer that, Bay? He's been answering that question throughout the whole time we've been talking. So what do you want him to do? You want him to summarize it again? Or? Yeah, sometimes you have to repeat what you how you started, but uh, yeah, uh, you listen. anyway. All right, Daniel, let's, let's try it this way. You know, do an AI, Daniel. Do an AI on those small questions, and AI will give you a yeah. a better understanding how to respond. I, to I think I have everything down. Larry helped me a lot. I wrote everything down that he said. I'm gonna watch this video again just to. Just the little things that you help me with, Larry. I really, I really want to focus on those. And then, yeah. there, I'm confident I'm going to pass. I'm not, I'm not nervous or anything like that. Yeah. No, well, it's not passing. You, it's a competition. So you have yeah. to, you know, have to beat out other people who. What well, Daniel? You, the way you answer, you're very nervous too. Um, right now, you I'm always, study, you so always, uh, you always to us. I don't know because it's us. How you say this, or what is this world? You can be thinking of how do you say things. You're supposed to be knowing what you're gonna say. I know, which is why we're doing this. I have to watch the video. I have to read it all, get a nose down, write everything that I did wrong and right, and then I'll be able to perform my interview perfect. Okay. All right. Uh, just send it to email there. Okay, then. Thank you.